As someone who has covered a lot of different streaming tools, options, and solutions over the years, I've been really trying to figure out and crack the code for mobile streaming, for streaming from a smartphone, both for mobile games and for just doing live broadcasts out and about. There's a few different options out there, and there are some crazy backpack streaming setups where you beam it over to an RTMP server and then do a lot more with it and then shoot it out. But I've been trying to find something simple that still has the kind of tools that people are wanting. I've been, you know, asked a bajillion times, why isn't there just OBS for mobile? Why can't you run OBS on Android? It's not really, comp none of that really works that way. But I have finally found an option that works. During all of my testing, again, OBS stuff doesn't work. The built-in apps, even on something like this ROG Phone 2, the built-in app isn't exactly great. The built-in apps for specific social media networks aren't that great. And trying to use the applications that come with some of the UVC capable capture cards I've covered in my capture card reviews in the past for mobile streaming haven't really worked out all that great either. But thankfully, Prism Live Studio reached out to sponsor this video, and their app is actually really pretty cool for mobile live streaming. So we're gonna walk through setting it up, all the different features it has, and how I could see myself using it moving forward, and what your considerations might be. I'm Apples Vox, and welcome to Stream Guides. Let's talk about mobile streaming. We can just do full camera mode. Just be like, yo, I'm a pizza. So Prism Live Studio is a free program for iOS and Android where you can live stream from your smartphone. You can live stream to a plethora of different streaming networks as you can see, see here, and you can even multi-stream to multiple at the same time without having to pay a fee, which is pretty sick as I get a lot of requests on how to multi-stream with this, that, or the other. It's super easy to use. The user interface is quite intuitive, especially if you used, you know, live streaming mobile apps before from Instagram, Twitter, things like that, or you've used the stories functionality because it has a lot of those cool features and filters and things like that, which we'll talk about in a moment. It can also go up to 1080p, although I feel depending on, you know, if you're streaming game stuff, which a lot of my audience might be, 720p is going to be the sweet spot, but you can stream up to 1080p and on iOS currently, although that will be coming to Android, you can even stream in 60 FPS which is pretty baller for mobile game streaming. So when you initially install the app from the App Store or from the Google Play Store, I will have dedicated links down in the description below. Let them know that we sent you since that, you know, they're sponsoring us here on Stream Guides. Uh, you will need to either sign in with a Naver account, which is the parent company for Prism Live Studio, or with one of your live streaming destination accounts. So I sign in with Twitch, for example. Uh, and then go ahead and set it, you know, set it up with your account, get authenticated and things like that, and you're ready to rock. They do actually require two-factor authentication for, or authentication for Twitch specifically. So if you happen to not have that set up, they do actually require it. That's actually pretty cool. A lot of these mobile apps actually require the opposite in that they require you to turn off 2FA on a lot of accounts because they don't have the means of like connecting with it. So that was neat to see. So for my testing, I am using the ROG Phone 2 here to stream and do my game streaming and things like that. I will have a review of this phone coming soon, so be sure you hit subscribe to check out that because it's a pretty awesome phone, especially for streamers. And I'm just going to walk you through the setup process here. So we have already signed in and gotten set up as I showed and talked about. And here you have your main options. I'm trying to like not make this super awkward on camera, even though you can like see me and things like that. Let's walk through the UI real quick. This is the main uh, live panel, but you can do a couple different things with it because this can act as a live streaming program or a capture or photo program. So we're currently in live mode, but, but if we swipe to uh, or if we tap at the bottom to go to video, you can then just record video or tap on photos and take photos with all the different effects or at least most of them and use it as a normal camera, but with that extra stuff added in, which is kind of neat. We're going to focus on live because it has all the same features, but integrated here. Up at the top, you do, of course, have the camera flipping capability, so you can see my new A6400 setup we're using here at the moment. Go ahead and flip that back. Three dots at the top are how you customize some of the camera options, so you can mute your mic, disable the camera, uh, flip your front facing camera if you need it mirrored for some reason. So for example, that is actually backwards on to my face, so I'm gonna turn that back around, make it look normal, and whether or not the video automatically saves after streaming. This is like with posting to stories. If you post to Instagram stories, you can have it automatically save those to your camera roll. If you want a copy of your live stream, which a lot of video creators like myself would, you have an option of automatically saving that here. And there is another important option for that, which we'll talk about in a moment with regards to the quality of the file that it saves. And then you can say whether or not you view this in full screen. We're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Over here on the top right, you have your actual sign-in account. So I'm signed into my uh, test 
Twitch account here, and you can also view your gallery of previous live streams that you've done with the app or previous draft videos or photos that you've made with the app as well, which is kind of nice. You can manage that all from here. And if I pull up one of the video files, you can go ahead and share the VOD straight from Twitch. Or if I record a video here really quick, so I am recording a video with the camera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And pause. We'll hit next. Now you can save the video or you can edit the video. So if we go to edit here, then they have this full fledged, like, I mean, I'm not going to say full fledged, but you know, this whole, you have video trimming, you can add multiple files or clips to the video track. You can add filters, you can add effects. I can just like resize it, scale it in, we go back here, there's cropping, there's trimming, you can frame it for different social media requirements. So if you want one by one or four by three for different social postings, you can set up speed, speed ramping time lapses, you can add music, you can do all sorts of stuff. I can sit here and draw on the video, which is pretty crazy. Lots of options for customizing your video, then you hit done. And you hit save. And then you're ready to download it to your phone, which I just did. It's already encoding it on the fly here. And you can change what resolution it's encoding to. I missed that window. That's fine. Or you can share it out to social media. Pretty impressive. Back to the live streaming function, though. <laughs> if, if you just want to live stream, then back up at the top right. Again, you can view your videos and your previous live streams. Click on the name that you signed in with. And you can go. You can see here the current account that you're signed in with. You can sign out of that or delete the account from the phone entirely, if so desired. Or you can set up additional stream destinations. So currently they have YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, which will go to Twitter as well. Uh, VLive, Naver TV, WAV, and Africa TV. Not heard of that. But I have both uh, Twitter and Periscope or Twitch and Periscope set up here. And then here is your stream download quality. And this is what I was talking about a minute ago with saving the, your video streams. You have two options. By default, it's adjustable quality, which means that while you're live streaming, if you have it set to automatically adjust bitrate on the fly based on bandwidth congestion and your Wi-Fi signal and things like that, which is probably most recommended for most mobile streaming scenarios. I am sitting right next to my router, so I've actually done static bitrate a couple times, but generally speaking, you know, you want it to be adjustable on the fly so you don't just disconnect your stream. But you can also say to save it in a fixed video quality. However, this runs a second encoder instance, much like with OBS, if you're streaming and recording in different qualities, it's encoding the video feed for two different purposes. That is what's happening here. That will require more phone load, have a higher performance impact, and you know, cause your phone to eat up battery life and get hotter more over time. But if you absolutely need, you know, a higher quality version of the feed, if you know the signal is going to be a little jank, that option is available to you. I would do some tests before you do any major event or thing like things like that to see how the performance impact is before you do this whole thing. And it doesn't work out, but I'm going to leave it on adjustable because that's what I think it should be used. You can adjustize, adjustize. We're inventing new words here in stream guides. You can customize your actual video re resolution. So this is like the canvas resolution in OBS where you have what everything is actually composited onto. So it's 1080p, 720p, 480 or 360. I'm going to leave it on 1080 for now. But if you know you're specifically going to be only streaming in 720 or 360p, I might actually just go ahead and set one of these options based on what your settings are to give your phone a little bit of an easier time. Here under general, you can disable the watermark. They do have a little watermark that appears from time to time on your stream by default, just to let people know what you're using. It is a free app after all. You can disable that if you want. Uh, you can also allow this to display over other apps. This is necessary for the uh, screencasting functionality, which is great for streaming mobile games. We'll touch on that in a moment. Then you've got the usual privacy policy, open source license, help documents, things like that. We're going to go back to the main feed. We're going to check out some of the camera options here now just to run through some of the cool effects that you have. So clicking the magic wand, you now have different face masks and things like that. So this is, you know, a cool little T-Rex face. And then with a lot of them, if you open your mouth, they do crazy effects. I'm a pizza. <laughs> I really like this one. I don't know what, what about it, but this thing is pretty sick. Uh, so there's lots of different face effects and different things that can happen. Weird little hats, stuff like that. Uh, if we, oh, I want to turn that back off. We set it back to none here. You actually have different categories. So you have face masks, so we can get some Halloween themed ones going here, which is pretty cool. They're goofy, but I like it. And a lot of mobile streaming stuff is based around this goofiness. You actually have entire like borders and background replacements here. I think it has to download these real quick. Okay, yeah, so I have like a Halloween border while I'm streaming. This is actually pretty cool. 
I kind of like this stuff. Keep in mind, depending on the resolution that you're streaming at while you're live, uh, 1080p removes some of the face tracking capabilities and stuff as an option because it just requires a lot of load. And so if you're planning on doing a lot of these effects, I would stick with 720p anyway. But lots of these borders and overlays and cool little, you know, customizations you can make to your camera feed just to get that little extra level of engagement and audience interaction going. Pretty neat. Um, then they do have actual emotes you can put on. That face track a little bit. Oh, that's ridiculous. These are so goofy. I like this one. This is my new one. Rainbow madness. All right, we're gonna turn, can I turn it off? Oh, they're just like one-time things. Then you have little like uh, sticker buttons that you can put on as well, uh, which are pretty interesting. So like I can tap and just be like, yo, subscribe. And it's gonna pop up a little button for it. Q and A time. Well, that's the subscribe one. Q&A time, you got any questions? You know, all of these elements just kind of help you to engage more with your live stream to, you know, have a bit more of a presence there. And then you can actually draw on the screen entirely. So if I click this, I can actually just straight up draw on the video and that's there. And then I can undo that. Um, and then you can add text to it too. So I can like just write Abel's Fox. That went somewhere. I deleted it. It's fine. There's also, <laughs> We're not done with all the options here. This app has a ton of options. There's actually just like camera filters outright too. So they have a bunch of like weird, vi vivid, warm, vintage filters, things like that. If you want to customize how your camera looks and then there's like an intensity slider and all that stuff. So we can turn it all the way off, all the way back on. Keep in mind it is mostly operating your camera in auto mode. So it won't be totally uniform, but you get the idea. And then when you're ready to go live, you can go ahead and hit ready. Now this will let you choose the account that you're streaming to. And then you can see here, I have Twitch selected, but if I go here, I can now choose Periscope instead of Twitch, or I can enable multi-stream and stream to both at the same time. Keep in mind that we'll use double the bandwidth, so you gotta have the uplink capabilities and you know keep in mind your data costs and things like that, but a really cool feature to have on a mobile app. I'm gonna turn that off. We're just gonna do the test Twitch account here. I'm gonna hit done and then you can customize what your actual streaming settings are. So here's that adaptive bitrate. I'm gonna turn it back on. This will automatically adjust bitrate based on what it thinks you need for your current Wi-Fi signal and things like that. It does still, you know, drop bitrate a little bit. I saw it go in between the full, what they consider the cap for Twitch, which it is, uh, six megabits per second, all the way down to like 2.5, which is weird because I'm right next to my router and everything should be fine, but mobile Wi-Fi is not super reliable, which is why this feature is actually pretty clutch. And then you have resolution 360p, 720p, 1080p. At least for Twitch, you might have options that are different depending on your streaming platform. Again, my general recommendation here is the stick with 720p. Now, if you do use the static bitrate, so set that to off, you then can customize your frame rate, which currently on Android is only 30 and 24 FPS. And of course, I recommend 30 out of that. But uh, if you have an iOS device, you can do 60 FPS. Unfortunately, iOS doesn't have like real screen casting, which we'll touch on in a moment. Uh, bitrate choices all the way up to six megabits per second. Of course, go with the highest if you can push it. And then keyframe interval for Twitch, you wanna set that to two seconds. I don't know why it defaults to one, but that's fine. But again, I'm going to just leave it on adaptive bitrate. That's fine, 720p, okay. You can give your stream a name. This is fine, it's just what I'm gonna call it. And then you can actually add an intro clip uh, from a video source. This isn't working on my Pixel or on my ROG phone. So I'm gonna switch over to my Pixel 2 and show you here uh, because in the My Studio section, you actually have a bunch of different sources you can add to your stream. Again, this is kind of like OBS. And so on one of those options is a media source. However, media source comes up empty on the ROG phone. I believe there's some sort of, it, it handles storage a little weirdly compared to normal Android phones. And I haven't figured that out with a couple apps now, but it works fine with the Pixel 2 XL. Go in, it pulls up your gallery, your camera roll, things like that. You choose different video files. So you can import like a pre-rendered intro clip to your phone and then add that in Prism Live Studio, and then you have that as an intro, so when you go live, it'll play like the Prism logo for a second, and then it'll play your intro, and then you can start your stream, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then once you're ready to go, you can set up your filters, your effects, and then you hit go live. And then of course, it will only start in the orientation that your phone is already set to. So for this stream, we are streaming in portrait mode, and then you can swipe over to the right to start adding sources. Again, we covered media. You can add music that is working on this phone. Last I checked, they have a library of royalty free that you can download in advance and then play, or you can click on device and I can play the Monster Cat song that I usually use in videos. 
You can preview it and then hit add to stream. And that's just going in the background. You can click player files. And it's just showing at the bottom of your stream. Playing as you go. Which is kind of cool actually. And then of course, you can click the little bars down here, adjust the volume of it so you can mix, you know, adjust your volume mix, which is extremely important. You can tell it to loop the song, add more, things like that. Pretty cool. So I've been back over, you do have a web source. This is for used for integrating websites. Now I got really excited because this has the potential to be massive because this has the potential to let you integrate stream alerts from a service like Streamlabs. And then if you're doing a mobile game streaming to Twitch, you get your subscribe and follow alerts and things like that appearing on screen, which is otherwise pretty much impossible on mobile streams at the moment uh, without bouncing it through an RTMP server, which adds more on top of it. So that's pretty cool but it doesn't work with Streamlabs. I've tested this a few times and tested the URL and everything, and it just says, oops, Streamlabs. It doesn't seem to work here. I'm guessing the type of browser that they use for this browser source just doesn't support it. However, I was able to test with uh, our sponsor for another video, Owned, and it usually shows up here. There we go. So I was able to just get like a little mini website overlay here. You can resize it. It all adjusts dynamically and then get rid of it. Pretty cool stuff if you just want to show off sponsors or some sort of website page or something like that on your stream, which I can appreciate. And then of course you have the screencast mode. I'm gonna go ahead and type that. And now my screen recorder has kicked offline because we have switched control over to uh, the phone or over to Prism because you can only have two things screencasting at once. But now I am in screen capture mode for the phone. I can't really play any games like this due to the fact that it's I'm stuck in the portrait mode instead of landscape orientation, but I do have plenty of footage. I did a lot of test streams. Shout out to my amazing Discord community for helping me continue to test this out and do a bunch of goofy uh, Call of Duty Mobile and Raid Shadow Legends streams. You have full control to just like manage here and so on. And you will see at the bottom, you have comments. So if you have any active chat, that will actually keep displaying on your screen so you can see that and respond to it. And you can even move it around and reposition it and things like that, which is pretty neat. So you can get it exactly where you want and then your camera up here, you can choose whether to show or hide the camera, show or hide the chat. And then you can actually move this at least to the corners. My only real complaint with this from a mobile game streaming standpoint is that these, these elements do overlay on top of your game, blocking game elements, and means that when you go to like click on them, you will be clicking on these instead of what's under them. And that can become a minor annoyance depending on the game, but there's no real way of working at, around that. So unless you get like the dual phone, dual screen edition for this phone where you have separate monitors and stuff, that gets a little nuts, but yeah. Overall, the results I've gotten from Prism Live Studio have been pretty good, even for game streaming, games like Call of Duty Mobile or Raid Shadow Legends, games like that, action-packed games. The quality can get a little crunchy at certain bits, more so at 1080p than 720p. You know, normal bitrate per resolution streaming rules apply that I talk about time and time again on this channel. Uh, you'll have to balance that no matter what you do to live stream, but the quality was actually pretty good. I had, again, some of our Discord members uh, checking out my test account while we were streaming this, and they were pretty impressed with the quality. The latency isn't too bad. I'm able to read chat, and I had the stream pulled up on my computer while I was doing it, and the chat lag was not significant at all. I, I was pretty impressed with the overall layout. Again, a little bit of feedback. I would love to see them get the web source working with Streamlabs browser source for alerts so you can get alerts going. And that would be like the number one thing for me to say, this is just the best possible option for game streaming, which it currently is, but that would be like the goal. Like there would be nothing that could ever compete with this if it has all the features that it currently has and has those alerts. Like that would be what everyone wanted from mobile streaming. So that's just like the one thing it needs to be 100% perfect. But otherwise it's pretty freaking awesome. And again, on iOS, you have pretty much all of the same options except for screencasting is a little different. And they cite a technical limitation with iOS specifically. I hope that they can resolve this in time. Uh, but you have to have an app that supports casting to another app, which I've not personally seen, but I don't mess with iOS much, but I had my community manager who wanted to stream Call of Duty Mobile from his iPad Pro and went to it and there's no screencast source. So do keep that in mind. They are of course working rapidly to add features and improvements. They are hoping to get 60 FPS over to Android soon. They're also hoping to introduce capture card support for adding in cameras or gameplay consoles or things like that with, you know, compatible capture cards. So I'm super stoked. We will definitely be following up to see when those updates come because it's pretty awesome. Let me know if you have any questions about mobile streaming in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Prism Live Studio, for checking or helping us make this video. Like I said, I've been trying to tackle mobile streaming for a long time and I've never really had good results with it. This is it. 
this is it. <laughs> Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Check out the playlist link in the description down below for other episodes of Stream Guides. If you want to stream from a computer instead of a phone, I have hundreds of videos on that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Fox. I'll see you next time.